Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the Fire Rises mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Muckle Lover, or Mr. Biden Lover. <sighs> We're sleepy today, but the task ahead of us, my fellow Americans, I appear before you in a time of crisis, the likes of which our country has never seen. A dictator has amassed around himself a clique of rogue generals and radical politicians. He has at his disposal a whole army of militias armed with state of the art weaponry courtesy of looted armies. Because of that man's actions, our nation has been torn apart at the seams. The West is in chaos, and the Northeast has collapsed, and the South burns. That man has ordered his soldiers to turn his guns on their fellow Americans to meet any threats to his usurped power with wanton brutality and animalistic cruelty. He has gassed peaceful protesters and arrested political opponents. With a cavalier stroke, he has blotted out the Constitution and declared his word as the only law worth respecting. He has got his bloody handiwork and opportunity to reshape the country. Arrayed against him are the remaining loyalists of the Army, Air Force, and Navy, community servants, selected officials in our institutions. We have the will of the average American, the real silent majority, with us as well. The man who shoots and bombs his way into dominance in Denver may shake his fist at us. He is powerless in the face of resistance. We have understood the ideas of freedom and democracy against the evils of dictatorship and tyranny. The road before us is long, but we shall walk it. And Joe Biden gets fit as a fiddle. Operation Marking Mockingbird concludes. Great news has reached us today regarding Operation Mockingbird, marking a successful conclusion. The meticulously planned operation was aimed at neutralizing the influence of Trumpist elements within D.C., ensuring that any remaining Trumpist cells have either been identified and eliminated or been disbanded on their own accord. Through a combination of strategic measures and coordinated efforts, we successfully safeguarded the integrity of our governmental institutions against potential threats posed by these elements. The dedication and vigilance of the FBI and the assortment of contractors we have also hired have proven instrumental in securing our government and upholding the stability essential for governance. This achievement underscores our unwavering commitment to defending dem democratic principles and preserving the smooth functioning of our nation's framework. By addressing internal disruptions effectively, we have reinforced our resolve to reunite America and return to how it was before collapse. First Washington, then America. So, basically, I've just shoved all of our divisions together, and while they're attacking us, we're trying to break over the river here. Uh, but in doing so, we're trying to break over the river somewhere. Big businesses flee New England. The beating heart of the international community, our, our economy, has steadily stopped as sporadic fighting has consumed New England leading many institutions to flee south into the Union of America. In New York, in full-on anarchy as gangs, the P uh, New York Police Department, military garrisons and militias battle in the streets, and in Boston, the radical American Iron Front has threatened businesses firms with a radical agenda. In either instance, the dangerous conditions of the Northeast has led to many firms to flee to D.C., Richmond, and Philadelphia instead of the new base of operations, as the situation in the Mid-Atlantic region is much more stable. This influx of capital into the Union of America has brought with them jobs, investment opportunities, and legitimacy the government desperately needs right now. Welcome to D.C. But before we keep going, we have the Second American Civil War. They say it can never happen here, yet it did. The United States, as we had known, is no more. It has been divided into countless warring factions competing for control or on a regional or even a national level, with the average citizen who just wanted a grill on the front line shooting at their former brothers and sisters turned enemies. The world will never be the same again, and whoever is still alive may wish they just had to keep fighting. The American century is over, and a new century has just begun. Reintegration. In order to record our states, we must first have claims on them. Then we must get high enough compliance of those states. Once we do that, we'll need enough political power to afford the, to core the state and wait on the coring timer. Once finished, the state will have our claims removed on it, but we'll gain a core. Congressional factions. With the siege of the U.S. Capitol, the support of the Congress, including the Democrats, and the contingency of Republicans, now we have anything we need in order to make changes to this nation, unlike ever before. However, before we can do this, we must ensure the support of the different factions within our government in order to pass, change, and repeal any needed legislation. We must be careful, though. And these factions are, if they're too displeased with us and decide to disalign with us, that could have severe consequences. Rules of Congress. Any faction over 33% influence can propose legislation. Any faction with a two-thirds majority cannot have their bills vetoed. Congressional bills last 100 days and can be extended 100 days each session if the faction has the influence to do so. So, uh, if not complete with the 43 days, progressives propose social spending. Liberals propose military spending bill. Interesting. So we can lobby against individuals as well. Present self. The health of the president has, with the advent of the Civil War, become a much more serious topic. During this war, Biden's B, Lincoln, FDR, and Washington rolled into one with charisma, strength, and intelligence to challenge any of the competitors to the American mantle. He needs to be clear and conscious of the decisions that he takes, or we could risk losing America forever. Is that a cough I hear, Sleepy Joe? Down the rabbit hole. Well, Sleepy Joe, what do you expect? You ain't going to get younger. If not completed, he loses fit as a fiddle and gets crisp as lettuce. Interesting. Presidential isolation. Get... Uh, 12% more stability, it's not bad. Remove 30 days down the rabbit hole. What do you mean, remove? Is it add or remove? Sideline on the president. Forge progress. Add 7 days. Scrub reports. Visit Camp David. Enjoy life. 
I enjoy life a little bit. We can probably visit Camp David, and we also buy stuff using the market for all this stuff here too. So, um, that being said, can we grab anybody yet? No. So we're trying an offensive here. We're not doing so great. We're good at defending. Um, I really want to get over the river somehow. That is like my main objective right now is just trying to get over that there river. And it's going to turn into a pain in the butt. Um, it's a big old issue right now, but hopefully we can strike across. Now, we, this is originally our area that we wanted to attack. But as you can see, it's not going so great. Serbia invades Kosovo. Well, things happen. Um, so, we're doing okay. Not great. I will say that. Hopefully we can break over either here or here. And Canada leaves NATO. Happens. Um, I'm going to keep attacking up here, which is fine. As long as we don't lose a tile, um, that's the most important thing for us. Uh, can you guys go here? Help support the attack there. It really sucks that we can't break over the river. Go to Tulsa. And go to Minneapolis. So we're desperately trying. We're fighting for democracy, of course, and then... Um, either one. Oh, uh, you know, I might want to go meet with the corporations because we've got to talk about this too. It's never been a secret that many conglomerates within an economy hold significant political influence and have played a significant role in shaping our civilian economy to keep the torch of freedom alive, even while it's besieged on all fronts. Despite their help, several issues have arose both socially and economically as a result, and outbursts of public support for unions, the blocking of many pieces of important legislation, an increase in congressional lobbying, and most importantly, the issue of the war economy. We must organize a catch-all meeting with executives of the most influential corporations within our borders to resolve these issues. A war to be won. Men and women of the armed forces, I come before you in a time of chaos and sorrow. Our country is being ripped apart by cruel war inflicted upon us by the endless and insatiable ambition of one man, and the zealotry of his supporters. The only way out is victory to defeat this man and all who take up arms against our fellow Americans for him by force of arms. To the generals and commanders assembled before me, I can only hope that you can make it quick. If we do not defeat those arrayed against our democracy, the oldest in the world, then our country will be led by a dictator who has no law above him. We'll be at the mercy of armed bands. Our rights, the rights to choose who we marry, when to have children, what we are allowed to print, or what religion we are allowed to practice, all will be compromised. We are left with no choice but to fight for everything we hold dear, for our families, our system of checks and balances, our rights, and you are the fighters. The negotiation table. Traitorous property. Negotiations have begun between the various corporations operating in our territory. So, far small deals have been made, and we've cleaned some major minor, or some minor roadblocks, however. Most recently, we asked the corporations for instant factory conversions. The main problem is that the corporations have asked in return for all the corporations currently siding with Trump to be transferred to them once the war is over. This has created controversy on our side, as some are worried this would give too many factories to the corporations and want to reject the offer, while others want to accept the deal. Ultimately, it comes down to the president to accept or deny the offer, so we can either accept, we get some factories, we lose some money, or decline if we deny the demands in a total of two negotiations if we say no. We begin setting against the political establishment, so the corporations will, will begin to working against us. So that wouldn't be good. Uh, for now, we could still probably use the military factories. So I'm going to go with a yes for now. Trade an economy. Here's trade. Here's the economy. Um, so we're going to say yes. Uh, we want to forge progress. We don't want anything bad to happen. Uh, influence 35%. Well, we're probably going to go with a progressive route, too. So we could probably dismantle the conservatives a little bit. Let's influence, let's support. Probably would be best, but we'll see when we get there. Ah, tiny bit of money. Gee, do we actually have a little bit of money? Uh, liquidity. Ah, 4.2 billion dollars. So we need equipment, right? Uh, we need main battle tanks. We need light tanks. Basically, recon tanks are light tanks. Um, Multi-role airframes, of course. Oh, and we did pop over the river there, too, which is actually really nice. Compared a little bit earlier. Motorized, APCs, infantry equipment. So, toad artillery, toad artillery, man pad systems, buy weapons from Kalashnikov. You get more of this one. Spent $4 billion here. And then, scrub the reports. I'm okay with that for now, too. That being said, oh, reintegration. Oh, raise militias. Oh, that'd be cool. It's kind of like a, wow, that's a lot of divisions. Uh, yeah, we could probably also use that. It's like the American Civil War and Kaiser Reich, so. We did, we're able to push in and through here. But now we've actually consolidated our forces, which is nice. And we're gonna start pushing in a little bit more because we definitely need to start expanding this. And we're there. Great, great. Expanding into rural Illinois. 
Do you have any upgrades? Uh, you know what? Go with Scavenger for now. Whatever we can grab would be great. Can you help out here maybe a little bit more? I just don't want to have another like ten front war. I hate ten front wars. That being said, where are you guys at? Oh, you're up here. You go here. Little points here and there. The negotiation tables, business tax rate. We've asked for professional advisors and managers to run currently owned factories at maximized efficiency. Corporations have in turn asked for lower taxes. While less controversial offer than the last, many of the progressive caucus and some of the liberal caucus have opposed this deal as they oppose the current corporate tax rate. Now, once again, it comes down to the president and his decision to accept or deny. Accept it. Decline. Because we want to eventually go with this one. Blow the whistle. America has forever had a love-hate relationship with corporations. While corporations like Standard Oil and U.S. Steel helped jumpstart industrialization, they've been the source of climate destruction and worker exploitation. While I've always advocated for the death of these entities, it's time we put our words in action. We'll seek nothing less than the total end of corporate influence over America, and we'll stop at nothing to ensure that this happens. What's we'll assured our anger conservatives within our government will gain major factor, fa favor amongst liberals and progressives in our government and broader citizenry. So I can press this. Yes. I talked about this last time. We don't want more progressive support because we're trying to go more progressive. Fuel the meat grinders, so we'll probably have to go with utilized online propaganda. Is it going to be perfect? No, but nothing ever is. Are we lacking here a little bit? Oh, they have quite a few planes. We're losing a few planes here and there. So are they. Our planes probably aren't as good, but still. Are we missing something here? Oh, okay, we still have tanks. We have, have tanks and such. Looks like we're about to win. Oh, we were so close. Okay. Uh, started countryside insurgency. Alarming reports indicate the emergence of a rapidly growing insurgent cell across the countryside, reportedly formed by local dissidents with allegiances to the constitutionalist endeavor, being supported and propped up by local militia organizations such as the Oath Keepers, Proud Boys, and Three Percenters. These organizations were armed and trained by West Virginia National Guard units following their arrival in D.C., and these units have now entrenched themselves across the countryside, especially within Appalachian Mountain Ranges, distributing guns to local fighters. fighters. Intelligence briefings have also pointed out to the construction of makeshift fortifications, pillboxes, bunkers, and even improvised fighting vehicles using whatever scraps we can find. We must make haste, uh, must make haste, and we should begin preparing for immediate military action in the region to secure our democracy from internal threats and prevent the situation from, from getting out of hand. <clears throat> Already, several counterinsurgent brigades have been called up to handle this, or engaging in a policy of encirclement, using superior firepower to tighten the noose around the neck of the insurgency and wait for them to run out of equipment, demoralizing them with shock and all campaigns in the air. Despite these concepts seem promising, it should cost us viable time and effort diverting our attention away from the front line. We should also begin forming connections with collaborators and those loyal to the legitimate government, primarily in urban areas, to allow us to infiltrate the insurgency and destroy it from the inside. If we want to achieve victory over those trying to subvert democracy and bring about a dark age for America, we must show these criminals no mercy and show our iron resolve to the world. Progressives propose social spending. During a recent congressional session in D.C., the progressives within the Congress have proposed legislation regarding our current social expenditures. The bill calls for increased funding towards social programs and relief efforts for Americans suffering the effects of the war, particularly to keep an, an effort to keep Americans afloat during this terrible, terrible time. The progressives said the need to bear in mind the health and well-being of our citizens now more than ever. Uh, while some liberals have agreed to this notion, the bill comes at the behest of conservatives who believe such a bill would be wasteful spending during a time as dire as this, believing that such funds would be better spent elsewhere. Oh, look at this. That's not good. Uh, regards to the opinion, it's up to the president to pass or veto this legislation. We need help more than ever right now. Progressive spending bill. We don't need to expand what doesn't need expanding. Despite controlling a large chunk of the Mid-Atlantic on paper, in practice, the Union of America has little control. <clears throat> oh crap, they actually are here. On uh, the countries outside of the city and major highways. In the rural countryside, many pro-Trump militia lie in wait, ambushing sus unsuspecting federal convoys on the way to supply the troops in the Midwest. In the center of this planned insurgency is West Virginia, whose mountainous terrain is perfect for this type of treason. Securing control of West Virginia is crucial to the war effort, with its location in the middle of the Washington-Chicago corridor serving as an important through point for supplies heading to the front lines. So do we, we're still losing here, but unfortunately we've got other things to do. Let us propose military spending bill. You guys get a hold and go. During a recent congressional se uh, session in D.C., the Democratic representatives have proposed legislation regarding our current expenditures. Uh, bills call for an increase of uh, funding towards our armed forces and infrastructure. Setting our current situation requires additional focuses on our military's combative abilities in order to ensure that the defenders of American citizens and democracy are adequately equipped in the face of a tyrannical adversity. With the war raging onwards, the proposal is considered to be a reasonable action due to the present circumstance. 
while a number of conservatives expressed approval on the bill, so of progressives have shown some concern regarding the bill, believing that focusing on the armed forces too intensively will result in the neglect of the citizens most affected by the war. Regards to the opinion, it's up to the president to decide it. Progressive support goes down. Liberal spending bill. We don't need to expand, but doesn't need expanding. Um, let's see where we have. They're aversive. Public trust goes down. With the stability, 2%. With the stability goes up, 2%. Conservative support, progressive support goes down. Well, this is really bad. Are you the American Constitutional Republic? Okay. So we actually broke through here. That's actually really nice. So I'm trying to widen what we've got here. I want to punch a hole through here so we can get over this river at least first. Let's we'll see what we can do. So I think Federal Command, good job. When you guys get here, I want you to go in. You're going to get attacked no matter what. But if you can find open holes in the line, the negotiation table political influence. The final rounds of negotiations are underway as we plead all previous roadblocks. Our final offer to the corporations is an assured public show of support for all current and future decisions. Corporations have asked for more representation and influence on the government once negotiations are over. Uh, I'm going to decline it. Let's see what happens. French volunteers arrive. Look at that. Morgan Town, yes, please. Please be in there too. Please don't let them move. I know you're fighting in mountains, which is really bad for us, but still. A striking display of international solidarity, the Rochambeau French Volunteer Brigade has been warmly welcomed by President Biden in DC. The brigade's commitment to social liberalism and democratic values has resonated with American leadership. You see the arrival as a symbol of hope and unity. President Biden, flanked by members of his administration, greeted the volunteers with open arms, thanking them for their bravery and dedication to the cause of freedom. As the brigade marched through the streets of DC, they are met with cheers and applause from the local population. Banners bearing the words Liberty, Egality, Fraternity were waved in the breeze as the volunteers were hailed as heroes. The arrival of the Rochambeau Brigade has brought a sense of optimism and camaraderie to the capital, reminding Americans of their shared values and the importance of standing together in the face of adversity. Liberty's allies, united we stand. That was cool. Rochambeau. Oh, welcome to the mountains. We're going to limit these guys as much as we possibly can, as fast as we can. You know what? Uh, well, there goes those guys. Out with a whimper. The end of ASEM. Pretty normal. They're on their own now. Can you, like, not let them go where I go there? Go, go, get here. Keep them in place. My God. Ah. So you these guys now, which is great. Um, I'm going to need you guys to help hold this front right now. That'd be uh, fantastic if you could, because I don't want to use these guys here at all. Silent the president. Move 14 days. Stability and political power, but still. Alright, so we're going to raise some more. It's coring days 50. Coring days 50. Two. One. Four divisions. Six divisions in Virginia. Seven in Indiana. Oh, that's a lot in Ohio. Sorry, volunteer state. This is what we got for now. Alright, so we gotta keep going with operations here. So, what are you? You're right here. Y'all can do this. I hope you can do this. It looks like you will be able to do this. Very nice. Get in there. Good, now they're completely surrounded here, which is nice. Very nice. That of New Orleans. Confederate forces have reclaimed it. Okay. Interesting. There's Louisiana. Very good, very good, very good. Ah, I forgot one. So, just in case, um, I don't trust Michigan. I don't trust the New England area, too. So, you're just going to stand here and just kind of hang out and see what happens. You are going back to here. And you're going to attempt to do that. Good luck. Don't die. Anything else here? Winter Specialist. You are these guys. Um, don't really care for whatever you have. Uh, don't care for whatever you have either. How about you? Adaptable would be pretty good too. Adaptable is pretty nice overall. As right, so we made it there. Nice. I guess you maybe lost a division or something. Um, I want to start expanding our front. 
across this river here. What also would be good would be pushing over and getting to St. Louis, but that's going to be a very tall, tall, tall order. Let's get more of Illinois first, shall we? There you go. Get him some time, and there you go. Get in there. Buckle up, y'all. Pretty nice. Negotiations break down. Our recent negotiations with the corporations have tragically broken down. The last minute efforts can stop the breakdown have failed and all current communication has fallen out. That's a catastrophic failure, as many blame us for the failure in negotiations. These events haven't gone over well within our party either, as many people are already becoming suspicious of the corporation's current power. This is degradation of our government's ability to act upon domestic issues. On the current civil war, as we truly try to clean up the mess that we made. Can it get any worse? Oh, you know it can. So we've blown the whistle. So if we can build things faster, corporate influence. Uh, uphold American consumerism or sack luxury goods production. You get partial mobilization. Hmm. Or tighten our grip on the plutocrats. That might not be bad either. If there's a little bit of stability. We get more tax and get more consumer goods. Or we can just continue going down with this because I don't want to go down this right side because that hurts our progressive support. Even though I do like what you can get down here, but still. And I'll go play with Joe Biden some other time too. Even though this side, I mean, this what? Hurts you by 5%? This side will also hurt our influence with progressives too. So, yeah, it kind of helps it, but still. Um, well, we hold an advantage of the constitutions regarding industrial capability and army size, which suffer from one major problem. Many of our citizens have been sluggishly apathetic to our war effort. Unlike the constitutions, who are currently drawing on their fanatic MAGA supporters to push against the relentless advances, we must immediately address the crisis by any means necessary to ensure that the people are truly supportive of our war effort. If we allow this crisis to fester, our warfare will be halted, and DC will be overrun by constitutional forces. We definitely need more fuel, and we just need more stuff in general, but still. That's pretty noble. Alright, so you're here. You know what you can do? You can go right here, take out Springfield. Roll them in. And while they're doing that, we're gonna roll into here. It's like Kenosha area ish. Balkan countries leave NATO. I pretty much saw that one coming, yeah. Blue machine tools are nice. Happy 2022, everybody. Uh, we're still waiting on that. 2023 artillery. I probably could get some better artillery. Oh, and they have just stacking bodies here. It looks like we might not be able to win. They're really just stacking them. Hi. Not ideal. Air burst weapons, very good. 2022. Uh, that's fine. You can do that too. Massacre and Tamper. Tamper. Tampa. Hey, look at that. Just in case, I'm going to start bordering stuff in Michigan. So Michigan is what we call a freaking mess. Construction, 17. You know what? I'm going to ask, actually get a little bit more oil as well. At least three more things. Oh, no. Cancel. There you go. Smidgen more fuel. That was Sacramento. So we can here and there. These guys are fine. I'm not sure we're supposed to be taking this slow, but you know. Oh, Vladimir Putin's gone. Look at that. Interesting development. So, what is like the casualties like? We've lost 30,000 versus that 25,000. We're slowly winning here. We've got to be very careful how we use our armor, of course, and whatnot. Um, Tennessee, sure. The volunteer state divisions? Yeah, okay. So, what about this going on? Congressional session. Very supportive and supportive. Good. Weekly trust is 0.9. It's slowly going down. So we do need to do something here. We need more political power as well. Party popularity, stability, modifier. Social liberals, social democrats, DSA, outlawed, totalitarian socialists. Well, let's go and grab this, start working on our trust. You know, people's got to trust uh, Joe Biden. Joe, 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 Joe. Interesting thing. Um, all right, so mustering. As so many young people aren't answering the call, unfortunately, our recruiting stations are empty, and the only draft gets people to the front. I know how patriotic you all are, I understand how you feel, seeing your relatives li living under the oppression of a madman, seeing your fellow students radicalized by disinformation campaigns by radicals, and living in the craziest town the world has ever seen. Heck, I was born when Hitler was in power, and I think you have it worse. And all that means we need some big ideas, and I know you all have big ideas. I know you want to help your country, and you want to see united and strong again, but the old ways of doing that, of going to school and working, aren't enough anymore. The military needs you, and your ideas now more than ever. We need engineers. Aircraft mechanics and welders. 
We need the few and the brave on the front lines. We need officers and administrators. Above all, we need more Americans to answer the country's call. I think you'll all answer. Um, I do want to get to uh, Marshall Moe. That'd be pretty good. Uh, at least 25% war support. Stakeholder economy. Keeping America awesome. Sack production. He's got war support. War support for stuff. Tighten the grip. I like that. I like getting more consumer goods because you can trade for more oil, which will help us out immediately. Division speed. Defense of democracy. Crackdown on draft offers. You might also do this one too. Utilize online propaganda. Yeah, it wouldn't be bad. Deals with the establishment. Lobby for liberals. Refresh liberty. So we can do all this if we really wanted to. Ah, uh, more than 50% total Congress support. Ah. Well, everyone can join the coalition. Well, I want to do this one next, because it helps us out. The only two things true in life are death and taxes. While the 1% of the society has historically been the least affected by taxes, they've also found ways to get out of paying their share. Whether it be through generous donations at charity, unrealized capital gains, or IRAs they've taken, or been finding new ways to skirt by paying what they owe. We'll tell her this no longer, and we'll force the rich to pay what they owe to us either by law or by force. The cost of war is high, and if the leader not willing to pay their part, then we'll force them to. Progressive proposal for spending. During a recent congressional session in D.C., the progressives within the Congress have proposed legislation regarding our current social expenditures. The bill calls for increased funding towards social programs and relief efforts for Americans suffering by the war. Uh, well, I think I read this one earlier, so... Less influence. Less conservative support. Well, I guess we kind of have to. They have, like, no influence. But they're very, quite supportive. Lobby against conservatives. Really start knocking them down even more. Sure, why not? Working on it. Working on it. Yeah, just a giant grind. They do not like the bloods, huh? I don't want to attack when they have other infantry fighting vehicles and whatnot. Not sure what else I could be doing better here, maybe? War taxes. Let's get anything there. Aerial support. Uh, I'll grab this one too. That's fine. Uh, sure, yeah. Okay, this guy up there. We're slowly cracking here, which is not ideal. Because they just shoved everything in Springfield, which really sucks for us. Well, if that's the case, he'll be it. We'll come here then. Feel more organization first, and. Good. There you go. See, if they're just not stacking bodies, we'll be okay. But they were just stacking bodies, so we're not okay. They're doing really well against these guys, that's good. Just in case, go and start training. And. Because Indiana's next. Nice, okay, so you're on the momentum mode. Oh, hello. Now they're stacking bodies into here, too. Come on. We're still up there, too. State of Michigan. <clears throat> How's Joe's health? Let's see. Wait. At seven days. At seven days. Add a couple more days. Yeah. Countryside insurgency. The question of the Arabs. Alrighty. Yeah, they're just gonna keep attacking like crazy here. We can stop the clear war on the state of Alabama. Okay, so you guys stop attacking then. They really got our number right now. Okay, 
They have so much militia, it's not funny. Battle for America, desperate measures. They're not that strong, but they're relatively strong. They don't have a really good attack at all. You know. They're really focusing on defense. And again, I'm not an expert at this mod. You know, we're, we're still trying and learning. Um, with this being said, where are you in West Virginia? There we go. Cool. Mm, uh, Virginia's next. Once, once since then. Ah. Provide economic incentives? It's not bad. But I do want to get some of this stuff. More support wouldn't be bad. Establishment. Can we do more than one? Uh, negotiate with progressives. Talk to take to the skies. The Progressive Caucus in the Democratic Party has grown considerably in recent years, thanks to the increased involvement of the younger generation in the nation's politics and the growing discontent towards the neoliberal policies of old. While many establishment politicians consider their proposed ideals to be unrealistic at best and radical at worst, their commitment to driving down wealth inequality and championing for social justice are admirable of ones overall. With their newfound influence as a result of the conflict, it is in our best interest to negotiate with them, both to keep them in the party line and to avoid alienating them and their supporters in this tough time. But perhaps a more progressive outlook is just what we need to gain some more popular support. Adversive. It's not great. Alright, so they're still attacking and whatnot, whatever. Putting those militia over there should be fine. We're still attacking here, but seeking for. And honestly, it, we gotta stop. It, it, we're suffering too much attrition here. Hmm. I, I really don't know. Like, they keep. They're very good at defense. And they just keep stacking more and more bodies, which we can't fight against. There's literally nothing else we can do. Do we have any other planes we can throw on here, maybe? Six attack aircraft? It's not much. Where are you at now? You're still doing that. Uh, go in here. Let's see how fast we can rapidly move in there. Very close, but they keep they're sacking soldiers in and out, in and out. Oh, upon a cross of capitalism, I want to thank the Progressive Citizens Alliance for Cincinnati for inviting me here and for Senator Bernie Sanders. Yeah, I'll give him a hand for coming alongside me. It's a crazy thing, isn't it? For some that don't realize how radical or revolutionary even our founders were, these were the activists of the era. I hate how we've tended to think of activists since then more as annoyances and their causes as trifles. We left so many Americans, black and brown, working class people, women behind, they made sure that we didn't forget it. After all, what are we fighting for? Well, it's our rights. It's like the hard-won right to choose. The right for men and women. Regardless of skin color, to be treated according to the content of the character and for Americans to enjoy social security in old age. Those who earned a battle where regular Americans had to take it upon themselves to keep the political process moving. As I look upon you, I know what you are today's movers. So many young people felt left behind and were given a voice by the progressive movement. Never lower it, always speak your mind. Take it to the skies. To command of the air means to be able to cut an enemy's army and navy off from the bases of operation and nullify their chances of winning the war. While our war against the Constitution primarily consists of ground-based engagements, we mustn't forget about the war in the skies. We must take the initiative to contest or control the constitutional airspace to provide our ground forces with strategic air support. We also need to support our air force so they do not become overextended. If we allow their force to, air force to fail, we'll lose the war as quickly as it started. Oh, I'll get more options here now. Lobby for progressives. We should probably do that one. Lobby against conservatives. But what else can we do here first? Ooh, 15% more attack is actually very good. I want this one first. Battle of New York, Big Apple Falls. Interesting. Oh, we actually got it. Nice. So you guys did a good job. Uh, can you guys beeline to St. Louis? No, you probably honestly can't. Yeah, we're just going to stop. That's really bad then. Hmm...
Tons of attack. Lots and lots and lots of attack. They're already good. Improve SPGs, yes. Looking a little better there. Out of New York. Because they will come knocking sooner or later. And it's going to be much sooner than later. That's not good. That's really bad, actually. Um, do that. Do that, too. Uh, throw yourself right there, too. Cracked on insurgents. Uh huh. Foil insurgents plots. Network strength. It's fine. We do what we must. Let's see. Any more divisions, too. Battle of Boston. It's not good. No, attacking is pretty hard, too. So let them shift their divisions out, and let's see what we can do. Quick moving, good, very good. League of the South, oh man. This is not good. This is very bad, actually. So just in case, I'm gonna stop training. You guys are doing well. Get in there. You have to balance everything out here. Stability. Come on. Jesus Christ. The fight in the sky. Today I come to you with a solemn request. As you are already well aware, our nation is facing an unprecedented crisis. One that has cast a shadow over all of us. The harsh reality is that we are witnessing the loss of lives of both soldiers and civilians on a daily basis. It is deeply likely that some of you are personally touched by the suffering, with family members or friends who are enduring unimaginable hardships as we speak. In times like these, when the situation may seem overwhelmingly dire and hopefully can appear elusive, it's crucial to remember why we engage in the struggle. We're not just fighting to defend ourselves, we're fighting for something more profound. We're fighting for freedom, for the preservation of democracy, and for the fundamental right of every individual to live in peace and harmony. Our ground troops are on the front lines, engaged in fierce battles and enduring great sacrifices. They're the ones who face the brunt of the conflict, paving the way towards the greater cause we all hold dear. Their bravery and tenacity set the foundation for the future victories we strive for. In this pivotal moment, I urge you to extend your unwavering support to these brave men and women. Your role, though it may come up with its own set of challenges and stress, is of immense significance. The aero efforts you contribute are not merely tactical maneuvers, but vital components of our overarching strategy. Your work will have a monumental impact on the future battles we face, and every mission you undertake is crucial in shaping the course of the war. Remember that your dedication and hard work are integral to our collective success. Each fight, each mission, and each moment of effort contributes to a larger purpose and brings us closer to achieving our shared goals. And we should continue to stand united, driven by the values we cherish and the cause we uphold. And for you, far into the remembered... Oh. Uh, strategic value of local air operations. Counter operate air operations. Air control. How about that one? Testing our limits, air range and efficiency. Plentiful plane production. Air base efforts. Drone technique. The aircraft. Well, when it comes to aerial efficiency, we've always sought to push further through military research and development, and we continue to defy what was once thought impossible. The new prototypes and breakthroughs in our aeronautical engineering that surfacing every day allows ample opportunity to utilize the next generation of technological prowess in the battlefield. By focusing our efforts on ensuring that the best and the newest models are out are put to good use in the field, we can outclass our enemies by placing an emphasis on aircraft quality aircraft rather than quantity. God dang it, we got us here. This is really bad. Um, do we have any better infantry divisions? We volunteers, we've got garrisons. National Guard would be pretty good to use. Support anti-tank, signal companies, engineers. Do we have any support arty? Do we have any arty at all? We have a little bit of arty. So propelled arty, support artillery. Can you convert at least half of you to that? No, I can't. Well, that's dumb. Michigan is going to kill us, too. What is this? National Socialist. Oh, God.
Okay, so he does. Dmitry Medvedev victorious in Russian elections. Interesting. So you guys won, which is great. Still. Ah. You know, we need more vehicles. We don't have enough rubber, but what else is new? Blockade of Taiwan. It's pretty normal. Service proposed industrialization bill. Uh, the, uh, during a recent congressional session in D.C., the Republican representatives proposed legislation regarding the American industrial heartland. The bill itself calls for an advancement in industrial spending across the board, setting the current situation to be dire enough for the public to understand the need for an industry. While the notion of increased production during this extraordinarily unprecedented time has attracted some liberals, approving such legislation will no doubt be admits the disapproval of Congress's progressive members. We decided the risk we put the world at bay by, through mass reindustrialization. Threatening climate change studies is proof that we need to stop industrializing, regardless of opinions. Joe Biden's got to figure it out. We lose support. Support's pretty high. We lose a lot of conservative influence, which we need to do. And I don't want to lose any more political power right now, so. If we win here and there, that would be great. Did you guys win here or something? Gen 3 light motorized. What else we got here? Reese. Air assault marines. Special forces. Special forces. 2024 uh, freight trains. I mean, it's not really important. Reese. That's fine with this one, I guess. You guys here. Peoria. If they want to keep defending there, that's fine. One could be a distraction place, so one doesn't have to be. There you go, very nice. Use them in tandem. And adjust constantly. Nine divisions is fine there. Uh-huh. Came in islands, lobby for progressives. Sure. So which one do you support? This one or this one? Limits on pushing beyond. Newly graduated pilots of the first fighter wing, first and foremost, allow me to extend my heartfelt congratulations on reaching a significant milestone. Completing your training is just no small feat. It represents countless hours of hard work, dedication, and perseverance. You face numerous challenges, and today you stand as a testament. Uh, to your own grit and determination. I am truly proud of each and every one of you. Now, with that commendation aside, let me speak to you candidly. The path that lies ahead of you will not be easy. Your future jobs, your upcoming missions, your assignments, everything you're about to undertake will test you in ways you can scarcely imagine. They will be fraught with stress, danger, and the potential for grave consequences. The stakes are high, and you'll encounter situations that push the boundaries of your endurance and bravery. I have no doubt that many of you are feeling a sense of nervous anticipation. Believe me, if I were in your position, I would share those feelings. Your limits will be stretched to the very edge and beyond, and yet here you are, standing ready to embrace the challenges that lie ahead. And this is what I call true bravery. Courage that manifests in the face of fear and adversity. It is this very courage that I urge each of you to embody as we move forward. You must confront every challenge head on no matter how daunting it may seem. Each day will present new obstacles and difficulties, but it's through overcoming these that you will achieve greatness. What you do will be remarkable and will shape the future of our Air Force and our Union. Remember, the importance of pushing beyond your limits cannot be overstated. Failure to do so may lead to dire circumstances, ones from which there may be no easy escape. Your actions will not be forgotten. Uh, they will be remembered as a reflection of your commitment and your courage. In closing, I will leave you with your motto, a phrase that encapsulates the essence of your journey and the spirit of which you should approach every challenge. Let it be a guiding principle as you forge ahead, making your mark as the elite pilots of the first fighter wing. Shock and awe. I like the speed and breakthrough, but still. Crackdown on draft dodgers. And the fight, uh, well... Yeah, in the fight for our democracy, every soldier matters, and our current recruitment crisis has given us a finite supply of them. Unlike the constitutions who draw upon the fanatic MAGA base for fresh recruits, we, don't have been, we haven't been so lucky. Much of our population remains defiant of the draft we've instituted, with many protesting against this or attempting to evade being drafted. We can allow this movement to gain momentum and must take any measure necessary to ensure the practice stops entirely. Should we falter in our attempts to subvert this practice? Uh, the consequences will, of course, be severe, and our campaign against Trump will fail. 
Ah, the UK's some leadership over there. Could you do this? This way we can actually make it in a circle. Oh, look at that. This should make things much easier for us then. The Nazis have won in Florida. Oh, God. It's only five divisions, but five. So many five enemy divisions, it's better than nothing. And the Germans are on the offensive. Good job, guys. Maybe that's the route we're going to take for this rest of this campaign. Then again, we've got Nazis and we've got Confederates in the south. Okay. That's not good. I think we're ready to defend against New England. That's going to be a pain in the butt. I'm not sure if we're going to hold against them. We've got Nazis in Michigan. And we've got Confederates and Nazis in the south. Well, a third of the south-ish. Texas is on fire. State of New Mexico. APLA is, not, is doing okay. Cascadia is going to have a focus tree eventually, too. Um, I think I want you guys here. You guys go here. Where are you guys at? I want to see if you guys can actually help out here. Because the Germans are doing pretty well here, and I like what they're doing. I do not want you to move into there, though. Are they getting ready for another war or something? What's going on? Because in the north, they're not doing great. Not the time to move. You guys start pushing hard. Here ish. Central American War, very nice. Oh, we don't have the map power. Combat engineers. Very good. Better tanks, perhaps? No. Propulsion blowout compartment. It's not too bad to have, actually. Especially in the north, it would be pretty good to have. Hey, it's only one more division, but that's one more division gone. Rock Island's army secured. In a recent offensive, a ground force will be able to capture Rock Island Arsenal, the premier arsenal of the United States manufacturing heavy and arms, arms small heavy and small arms industry. Ah, there goes Mexico too. Go. Great Jackson Massacre, oh boy. Enjoy life. It's fine. Screw the reports. Work progress, that's fine. That's Virginia. Crackdown insurgents would be nice. We're getting there. I know we're not winning here, but really we're here to push through here. Crack down draft dodgers and professionalize the army. The status of our frontline units has come far in comparison to when the war first began. The formerly common reports of AWOL soldiers have grown rare, with the units that were formerly disobedient and, of course, questionable loyalty now marching in tandem with the orders the top brass sends out. The reorganization of the Federal Army is largely complete, with the troops performing much more up to the standard expected of them as soldiers of the Union. With most of our immediate issues taken care of, it's time that we fully return them to the status of a professional army, with a necessary commitment to match. The future of some individuals who remain questionable or are bothersome in terms of loyalty will be rooted out and either transferred or replaced, demoted or discharged in exchange for more level-headed personnel. In addition to securing the support of the army, this will allow us to reduce the necessity of our many hastily composed civilian militias filling in for the front line. God, I hope this is doing some serious damage to them. I could be wrong, though. Getting over the river is paramount right here. We got it. So we're going to stop our attacks. You all hold. Oh, there you go. You can keep protecting it if you want. It's up to you. So now I'm getting more concerned down here, so we are going to add this here. There you go. Uh, I'd like to do that, but we can't, unfortunately. Are you all... Why are you still attacking? I told you to stop. Why are you... Holy crap. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I did not tell you to do that. Guess in Colombia. Oh, okay. 
Mike, is it our Columbia? I don't think so. Service Pro's industrialization bill. Uh, I, or I can't afford this anymore. Political power. They can support us more. There you go. Doing okay there. Not sure how you're still winning here. But I'm okay with it. Good. Proof self propel guns are nice. I don't know if we're actually using this at all, but we'll do it anyways. Not bad. Mash oh crap. Well, that's not good. We need more soldiers over here. Yep. Definitely. We're definitely trying. How much more manpower do you have? They have a lot of manpower. Holy cow. Let's see, air superiority. Yeah. How is air superiority now? 155 left. We're doing some decent damage still down there. I'm just worried when the war really breaks up harder now. Uh, okay. Great. Lobby for the progressives. Then what? Uphold NATO doctrine? Supply consumption would be bad. Huh. Ah. This conservative support, weekly stability, aiding the unaided, signing the Economic Freedom Act, legitimacy, power, influence. Oh, we can't do this one. Uh, support minority businesses. Pass a pro act. Hmm. Provide economic incentives. Uh, getting what we need. Keys a little more political power, but we gotta keep going this way. Utilize online propaganda. Wondering which would benefit from the most support is online social media platforms such as Twitter and Snapchat. These social media platforms can be weaponized by us to spread anti-constitutionalist propaganda. In addition to spreading uh, propaganda, we can use these online message sites to draw on potential recruits, domestic and foreign. However, we must monitor these sites for content that is against our military campaign, as we can afford to allow the spread of pro-constitutionalist rhetoric. If we allow this to happen, we'll have to deal with new internal unrest and the ongoing war effort, of course. So, these guys have done a pretty good job so far. Uh-huh. I want you guys to really see if you can drive home across the river somewhere here before the Nazis start marching against us. Honestly, you might be able to do something here. You know, take you guys and then all of you, except for you, go here. Could you win? No, you couldn't. Okay, good enough. Well, it looks like they're going to war with us now. Crud. Hell oh, there's an encirclement here. I didn't even notice this. Hello. No, you ain't taking this. You ding dong. What do you got here? So, combined efforts, asymmetric warfare. We'll probably go with NATO. I mean, that seems like probably the best idea for us, so there we go. That should be good. They're still attacking, still attacking. They're still defending like crazy. Uh huh. We get a south to clear one of these guys. Not ideal. Looking okay ish here. And they. Oh, shnikes. Uh, I'm going to need y'all to like defend really hard. You guys are attacking. You guys are attacking. I need you to reinforce this line immediately. I'm glad the devs divided the the world like this, or, or you know, America like this. This makes a lot of sense to divide it like this-ish, to still make it like reasonable to play as. 
So, thank you to the devs if they're watching it all. Doing okay, doing okay, not great there. Uh, how are we doing here? Struggling ish. You know what? So be it. We're not going to advance on this front anymore. We got Nazis to get kill. Pushing through to Kalamazoo. Oh, they're pushing in against us here, too. That's not good. Blow out compartment. Uh, let's see. Onto turrets. Smoke launchers and such. Yeah, there you go. Very type ammo. Get in there. Take another tile, because we can hopefully in a circle them. Come on. Move. M -m -m move. Get your butts over there. That's just so bad. Okay, so you guys are going to be together. Beep. Beep. We're not going to focus on Trump anymore. We've taken a good chunk of Illinois and Wisconsin. Well, there's a little bit of Wisconsin. This is very, very, very extremely concerning, though. Do not, do not allow them another inch. You can retreat here. Battling the trolls. For too long, the internet spread hate and division. We have allowed subcultures of young men to be brought into the abyss. How many people now go down for the town in Denver because they are radicalized in these chat rooms? The forces of love and unity had no answer until the darkest days of the first administration, when the hashtag resistance was born. Using their platforms to oppose his machinations of corruption, they made sure his dealings with our foreign adversaries were well known. It's my honor to host him at the White House. I can only view kids like Harry Sisson and Dash Dobrovsky, who as young men should aspire to be. They're staunch American patriots, not nationalists, who hate, but patriots, people who love. Men and fathers like Mr. Padalon. Padalon here, who go by a Brooklyn dad on social media, mothers and grandmothers like Allison Gill, whose podcast will clarify the terrifying revelations coming from the Mueller report, are models of concerned citizens who took action. I can only hope that more Americans will take them as their model and combat the propaganda sold to them by the tyrant as allies. Don't be afraid to speak the truth. Encourage liberal war hawks. Cover rate. Or discourage anti Americanism. Organization defense. Military society. Well, we don't want that one. This one is worse to do than this one. Encourage liberal war hawks. Huh. Corporate new recruits. Mandate female service. Finish the fight. Well, let's uphold NATO doctrine. Since its creation in 1949, NATO has evolved its military doctrine of embraced various roles, including crisis prevention, deterrence, and defense, and cooperative security. While we've not fully embraced integration of the NATO High Command, we've made considerable efforts to integrate the NATO doctrine into our military structure. Along with upholding NATO's military doctrine, we're also committed to abiding by the rules of engagement and the Geneva Convention. Must not abandon these principles, even if we're on the back foot against the Constitution's forces. Because uh, I do want to do all this stuff here, too. Pass the PRO Act. I don't want those animal consumer goods. Pass the Economic Freedom Act. With the lives of so many Americans now in disarray as a result of the tragic civil war, it's highly important for us to maintain that their livelihoods are not subject even for the ruin. With the features of so many citizens appearing devastatingly uncertain, measures once considered fiscally radical by our opposition have become nothing more of a moral obligation for us to enact. The Economic Freedom Act will ensure that we do just that, by affording universal basic income for the first time as well as additional stimulus checks to those in need. We can help keep the lives of American citizens afloat during this turbulent period in our history. Granted, the program's benefits are a far cry from what we had initially desired to provide due to financial constraints as a result of the war. However, this landmark bill for social spending and the wealth inequality issue is a travel of its own, one that will undoubtedly remain for the foreseeable future. In addition to this, the government will be granted the ability to seize the assets of certain companies who have otherwise refused to cooperate with us in their foolish preferences towards Denver or any other secessionists. So, I think I'll end the episode there. Let's take a look see before the trade. Not looking good. Debt looking really bad. But oh well. Do we have enough consumer goods? We have a little bit, a few more consumer goods, so let's get a little more oil, because my god, do we need that fuel. Yeah, and so we're going to struggle against the Patriot Front. We're struggling against the Nazis. Um, we're going to abandon the fight against uh, uh, these guys here. It doesn't look like the Southern Federal Command is doing very well, though. But, oh, hold, they've only up to 5 to 11 divisions. Roy Cooper, what have you done? I don't know, what are you, low morale? You're fighting... Jesus Christ. But overall, I think we're doing okay. It's not great. It's not glorious. 
But we're doing okay, especially for my first run playing as America. This is very concerning. Hopefully we can push through here and just encircle a lot of enemy divisions, even though they do have a lot of tanks. So, um, Regardless, hope you enjoyed the uh, video. If you did, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue pushing on and maybe taking out New England and Michigan. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.